What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash malicious compliance. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. This story's called, Coworkers Not Doing Their Part, Boss Caught in the Middle. This was some years ago when I worked for a small restaurant. I started out as a dishwasher and eventually moved up to cook and prep cook. Ended up working there for a couple of years. There came a point where during the busy summer months, as a dishwasher still, I would be busting my butt to make sure everything ran as smooth as possible throughout the restaurant. I'd help the servers with their tables, I'd of course clear tables as much as possible, I'd help the kitchen staff restock things as needed, and so on. The dishes, of course, were the job, but only so far as we could stretch things before closing time. After which, the remaining dishes and any other things that needed doing throughout the restaurant would get taken care of. Sometimes this took time to complete when the restaurant was super busy and things backed up really bad throughout the place. The thing is, though, that while there are customers, serving the customer's food to them is the priority. So when push comes to shove, the thing that falls behind the most is always the dishes, my job. This led to a string of days, more than a week, where I was stuck in the restaurant an hour or more after close just getting all the dishes clean for the next day. One day was particularly bad when I was there until 1 a.m., several hours after closing. This was partly because it had been a really busy day, but also some customers staying late, and so on. My boss told me the next day, I've noticed you've been closing later and later, and yesterday you closed way past midnight. What's the deal? I need you to close faster. I explained to her how the dishwashing took second place to the priority of serving people food, so the kitchen staff always got my help when they needed it, and the serving staff always got my help when they needed it too. However, at the end of the night, when the last customer left, the servers would finish resetting the tables and the kitchen staff would finish restocking things for the next morning, and naturally, the cleaning that needed doing all around would happen. But then, everyone else left and I was stuck there washing dishes on my own with nobody helping me. Well, that's your job! You should be able to handle it! Yes, but I help them do their jobs, so at the end of the day when they're finished, they should help me with mine. Or else I'm gonna be here longer and that's just how it is. Alright, well, I need you to leave earlier, so figure it out! I did. I did figure it out. The next day, as my manager liked to call it, we were slam a jamma. Crazy busy. Dishes were even more packed up than ever before. At closing time, I told the serving staff and kitchen staff that I needed some help cleaning this up because the manager wanted me out of there earlier. They said, well, you can manage, and off they went. I decided I'd had enough. I left about 45 minutes worth of dishes uncleaned and took off at the appropriate time I was supposed to be done by. The next morning, the kitchen staff were quite upset because they obviously didn't have things all finished and had to do some extra work to get it clean. My manager called me into the office to have a talk when I arrived later that day. So, you left early and left a bunch of stuff dirty in the dish pit. Is this going to be a problem? You told me to leave on time. I did the best I could. The options were stay later or leave on time and leave some dirty dishes behind for the morning staff to clean. You can't get those dishes done in that much time? The dishwasher has a limited capacity, so that's the limit for some dishes. But pots and pans, things the kitchen uses mostly, can be hand washed more easily. The same is true for some of the serving staff stuff. In fact, a lot of that has to be hand washed regardless. Here's what happens. First, the front end gets slammed, then the kitchen gets slammed, making the orders for all those customers, then the customers leave and the serving staff do their thing and the kitchen starts to catch up. Then the kitchen gets caught up and the serving staff starts heading home, then the kitchen staff heads home and it's just me in the back still dealing with the original big slam of customers we had earlier in the day. Here's what I can do. I can refuse to help them and 100% focus on making sure dishes are done. That may mean you need to have more serving staff come in to handle the load since I won't be helping. That also might mean you may need to have the line cooks or prep cooks stay longer to make sure the kitchen is kept up to pace through the busiest hours. 
If I'm just sticking to clearing tables and washing dishes, I can keep up and maintain everything fine. Okay, we'll do that. The rest of the restaurant didn't last a day before they were demanding my help during their rush times. Clearly upset, and it was only a day after that that the manager instructed them that they needed to help me with washing dishes and we'd all leave together at the end of the night. They finally started to understand when they tried to help me get those dishes done. It changed everything. I, of course, returned the favor and all was well. Not long after that, I moved over to handling prep work, slicing and dicing and all that kind of thing. I also started handling food deliveries and so on. It was nice and I got paid more, but I found out pretty quick that the faster I did my job, the less I got paid. Unlike with dishes, there was a bit more fixed amount of work to do, so I was happy to help the dishwashers. I got so fast at one point that in the middle of summer rush days, I'd just hang out in the dish pit, and the dishwasher would have it so easy. The manager tried to have me do both dishwashing and prep work because otherwise I lost too many hours, but that situation and how I got past it is another non-malicious compliance story. Yeah, the sad truth about work is you're not going to be noticed if you put in a lot of effort. The only thing that gets noticed is when you put in less effort than you normally would, and that's how you're going to end up carrying the whole operation on your shoulders. This story's called, Boss Tried to Be Slick Changing My Employment, Ended Up Having to Pay Me More Than What He Thought. Hope everyone reading this is safe and healthy. Now, to give some background for the story. I was working as a legal assistant at a small law firm but started off as the receptionist. This was a job I could get straight out of college while I give myself some time to adjust to adulting life and getting ready to apply to graduate in law school. He fired a coworker over her asking for a higher raise and immediately told me I was going to take over. The law firm has eight employees and has a high turnover rate, and I didn't realize until a couple of months ago. My boss is a stereotypical boomer that gloats about how he was in the army, how he's a ladies man even though his wife is literally our office manager, and doesn't train his employees even though he forces his employees to sign a contract saying that they will have to pay $2,500 if they don't complete one year. Over the past months, he has tried to say my work is terrible, even though I used all of his templates and had to correct him with information I received from the court on how to do these exact family pleadings, and I have closed cases that have been with us for years in the span of one to three months. He blames me for being rude to clients, even though the clients told him it was not me and was another coworker who he showed favoritism to, and consistently asked me if I found the right man, would I be with that man after he met my girlfriend at the firm's annual holiday party. There's a lot more, but too much to write. Overall, he hated anything about me, and my coworkers would often have to vouch for me because he would take out his anger on me. Because of this, I made sure to always send emails of our conversations and clarify things in order to keep track of all the shortcomings and issues. I even had a meeting with my office manager and documented the fact that I wasn't trained by sending a follow-up email and screenshotting an email where they made me train a new person one week after I started. Someone please tell me if this looks like adequate training. Three weeks ago, he changed my contract to being a non-essential employee and told my coworker before she quit that he lessened my hours because of my poor work and anything I did could be sent by mail or email. He often rushes through his work and leaves a lot of loopholes in his contracts. So cue malicious compliance. The contract said that I would be a non-essential employee and by the way he wrote it, he capped phone calls at half of an hour, but I would get paid $15 per call, $45 for each family packet I did, and $15 per email correspondence. So I did a couple of family pleading packets, but kept my coworkers in the loop and they told my boss that they were busy with other things and asked if I could make the calls. 
They know I am the only one in my household working and felt the contract was terrible. I also asked them how they would read the contract and they interpreted it in the same way I had. Since I was deemed non-essential and he could not be bothered to draft a letter letting me go into the office, I had to send various emails for him to print. When he would ask for me to place items on his desk, I referenced my contract stating I was a non-essential employee and could risk a fine or jail time. I ended up making so many calls. I always tried to make them as long as possible by asking clients how they are and hearing them complain about what's going on and how difficult it will be for them to make payments at this time. That's when I sent my hours to my office manager. She CC'd my boss and asked to verify hours and explain. I explained and broke it down with my contract. My boss couldn't be bothered to go back to his email and ask me to forward the contract. At that point, it took them forever to respond and I was eagerly awaiting their response. He attempts to spin it back and change the wording of my contract to say each call was only 75 cents and each correspondence was 150. This would essentially make my paycheck only less than $100 even though I had originally been paid $15 an hour and had worked 50 plus hours in the past two weeks. At that point, I send my resignation and screenshots of all the times I asked how do they want the timesheet, sent along with the government stay-at-home order for non-essential employees. He attempted to change the story to say that I was an essential employee and finally offered to give me a letter, but at that point, I had already sent my resignation. After reading my email referencing the contract, lack of training, and mentioning the conversation with his wife, he conceded, made an argument that I was leaving on good terms, and is giving me the wages I deserve. Moral of the story, document everything and follow up. I have a second round interview, so please wish me luck. It's a hard time, but we'll get through it. Honestly, that seems incredibly tedious, but it worked out for you. However, I have lived my life not writing anything down and documenting nothing, and I've done pretty great for myself so far, so I'm gonna stick to that. You guys can stick to your uh, copious amounts of note-taking. <laughs> Obviously, I'm joking. The more information you have, the better. That's just a very basic principle that is correct. However, we can also all agree that writing and taking notes sucks. This story's called, No Problem, I'll Print That Video For You, and while I'm at it, I might have you fired as well. Hi all, this is my first submission to the sub and I hope you enjoy it. Context. This happened a few years ago. I was 18 and working as a receptionist for a community nursing service. As the youngest in the team by a long shot, the average age of employees being around 55 to 60, I was usually the one responsible for the computer stuff. Mostly just simple things, uh, nothing a quick Google can solve. The other staff members were wonderful and I learned a lot from working with them. Except for the assistant manager, Karen. This woman was the bane of my existence. She was 75 plus, recently came out of a 15 year retirement as a receptionist, and was armed with a certificate in business management from a 4 hour online course. She refused to use basic computer skills such as Word or email, stating that she didn't need to learn them again when she had others to do it for her, namely me. In a 5 hour shift, I would spend 3 hours just fielding her tasks. Needless to say, this came along with all the fun personality traits that make a manager from hell. Malicious Compliance At the start of my shift, I receive an email from Karen asking me to print the attached files. One was a PDF and the other an MP4. So assuming she just meant the PDF, I take the printed copy to her. This is roughly how the exchange went. Why do you only have one file? I said two. You want me to print an MP4? Is it that what I asked? A monkey could do your job, and probably better at that. <laughs> Here, I'm pretty sure she laughed at her own joke. Me? Desperate? Look, I don't think you understand. Don't try and teach me. Don't forget I did your job for 20 years, and now I could have you fired. Already over it and ready for some malicious compliance, 
Okay, well, I've never printed this type of file before, so it might take a while. Karen interrupts. I don't care how long it takes. I'm your boss and I've told you to do this. Once it's done, then you can move on to the other jobs. I'm grinning from ear to ear at this point. I get back to my desk and send her an email summarizing our conversation and explicitly clarifying she wanted me to print an MP4, to which I got a snarky reply. Perfect. I spent the next four to five hours pausing the video every two to three frames, screenshotting it, pasting it onto a Word document, and printing. The administrative tasks piled up, not that Karen noticed because she mostly spent her time reading magazines or talking on the phone. I felt bad as this placed an extra load on the other receptionist. However, since Karen was universally hated, they gave me their blessings. Once complete, I took about 100 pages carefully held with clips to her desk and sweetly told her that I'd printed the other file. She looked smug until she saw what was in front of her. Page after page of almost the same picture as the man moves through the video, some slightly blurry, all in full color. She was furious to say the least, but I was one hour overtime on my shift and Karen knew that would already cause her some issues, so she let me leave, though I knew it wasn't over yet. As expected, I get called into HR for a meeting the following week, where they accused me of wasting company time and not complying with management. I explained the situation in detail and showed them the email, including her awful reply. I also showed them a few more emails and texts where Karen used some particularly descriptive words to insult our staff members, including the very HR rep taking my interview. Turns out, this was the straw that broke the camel's back as Karen had multiple reports against her from other staff members, and she had been driving HR insane with her own complaints. She lost her job the following week. The best part is that this happened on a Sunday, where I got double pay. I took some of that sweet overtime cash and brought in cupcakes to work once Karen was gone. I said it was an end-of-week treat. But we all knew what we were celebrating. The HR rep seemed to particularly enjoy hers. Honestly, can you blame her for being that bitter of a person? Imagine, <laughs> imagine coming out of a 15-year retirement after being a receptionist for, I don't know, how many years? To have to do more work, okay? You're 75 years old after coming out of retirement. That just does not sound like an ideal situation to be in. Once you're tired, all your responsibilities, they just gotta be like stuff you wanna do yourself. You don't wanna be working for other people when you're retired. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.